today's lesson, section 7.4b, we're still talking about basic trigonometric equations. Here, these ones will be probably a little bit more complex, but it's okay. That'll give us uh, more opportunities to kind of see how um, these uh, problems play out a little bit. Um, now, here, we're going to actually start involving our properties from our previous sections uh, to help us solve. So don't be af afraid that when I start inserting um, concepts that we previously talked about in our um, proving identities part, okay? So for example, two, we want to solve the following equations over all reals. That's what that special R looks like, okay? It's like an R with the, um, the vertical um, line for the R has like a double bar to it. Um, that was probably a crummy R, but that's okay. So here for letter A, I have 1 plus sine theta equals 2 cosine squared theta. Now, these ones are difficult just by starting off because sine and cosine, you don't really want them together at the same time. You want them all in terms of either sine or all in terms of cosine or tangent, something like that, so it's easier to solve. So we want to use our properties to help us get them all in terms of one another. Now, you can't really make sine into cosine, but because cosine is squared, one of my properties is that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta, okay? which is your Pythagorean identity. So then I could insert that in. to get that. So now my equation's all in terms of sine. Now I can start kind of solving. Now for these ones, because they're square, think of like if you had one with um, variables, just like x in there, it would be like 1 plus x equals 2 times 1 minus x squared. So you want to get everything on the same side so that you can try to factor. Okay. So I want to distribute first. So it gives me 2 minus 2 sine squared theta. And then I want to move this stuff over, so subtract 2 to both sides, add 2 sine squared theta to both sides. Okay, so then that gives me sine squared, or 2 sine squared. And I'm going to readjust these, so plus sine theta. And then 1 minus 2 gives me negative 1 equals 0. So think about it like this. This would be 2x squared plus x minus 1 zero, equals 0. So then think about how you would go about um, factoring um, this type of trinomial out. Now because it's sine squared, both of them are going to get a sine theta. Okay, There's going to be 1 with a 2 and 1 with a 1. <clears throat> now because of this is just 1, so both of the end terms are going to be 1. Now you just have to figure out where to put the sign. So since it's plus negative, I need to figure out where those are going to go to help me match it up to get the same thing. So 2 sine theta, I want to get a positive one, so the pos or the plus needs to be bigger. So if I go with plus here and minus there, so then the outsides would be 2 sine theta, inside would be negative sine theta. So if you put those together, that would be positive 1 sine theta. So that gets me what I want. Okay. So then since I have those two, I want to separate them out and solve. Okay. So then for the first one, I add one to both sides. Divide two both sides. Okay. For the second one, I want to subtract one to both sides, and that'll be it for that one. So then now, think about where theta equals one half. So, our sine of theta equals one half. So, on a unit circle, that's pi over six, and it's five pi over six because that happens in the first and the second quadrant. Where does sine equal negative one? And that would be just at one spot. 
it would be 3 pi over 2. Okay. So then now let's put all our answers together. So then it, since it says all reals, I need my plus 2 pi k. And then I want my 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And then my 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And that'll be my answer. Okay. Moving on. Next one. Here I have b of 2 theta, or sorry, sine of 2 theta minus cosine of theta. Now here, um, 2 theta would suggest that it's a double angle identity or form formula. So the double angle formula for 2 or sine of 2 theta would be 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so then now, notice what they have in common. They have a cosine for both, so I take out a cosine theta, and then that equals 2 sine of theta, and then it'll be minus 1. Remember, you're dividing, so cosine divided by cosine is going to be 1, not 0. Okay, so then I have two things multiplied to each other that equals 0. I can separate them out. First equation's already solved for me. Second one, I have to do a little work, so I add one, divide by two, okay? So then where does cosine of theta equal zero? That would be um, at pi over two, and three pi over two. For sine of theta, we already did one of these, whereas pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 okay so then now let's write our answers for all reals now notice that these are the same distance both ways from each other and so sometimes that happens so I can write pi over 2 plus pi k or you could write them individually so you could write pi over 2 plus 2 pi k and 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k if you like this one's just a shorthand version and then pi over 6 plus 2 pi k and 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. I can't write those in the same way as I did pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 because they're not the same distance on both sides. Like, So from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 is only a distance of 2 pi over 3. The other direction, it would be 4 pi over 3. So they're not the same in both directions. So then, therefore, I can't do the same thing. So then this would be my answer. Okay. Next one, I have cosine theta plus 1 equals sine theta. Now, sometimes there are no identities that you can plug in, which is unfortunate. But you can do something else, kind of like if you had a radical for something. You can square both sides to create some identities that would be helpful. So here, let's square both sides. And then on the left side, since it's a binomial, I need to multiply it out. So cosine square theta, and then plus cosine theta, plus cosine theta, plus 1. And then the right side would just be sine squared theta. Okay, I put my like terms together, so I get cosine squared theta plus 2 cosine theta plus 1. Now sine squared doesn't really match up with our cosines and because I have one cosine here doesn't have a square I can't make them into sine so I gotta go the other way I gotta make them into cosine so let's insert one minus cosine squared theta in for sine squared theta so now I have everything in terms of cosine so let's move these over so let's subtract one to both sides and let's add cosine squared to both sides. So now I would get a problem that says 2 cosine squared theta plus 2 si cosine theta equals 0 because the ones cancel each other out. Now notice here they have a 2 cosine theta in common so let's pull that out. 
So 2 cosine theta is going to leave me with cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. Okay. Now I need to separate them and set them both equal to 0. So 2 cosine theta equals 0 and cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. So on the left one, i got to divide by 2. Leaves me with cosine theta equals 0. On the right, I subtract 1. I get cosine theta equals negative 1. Okay. So now, where does theta um, for cosine give you 0? That would be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And then where does theta for cosine give you negative 1? That would be at pi. Okay. Now, because, now this is only because, since you squared, you must check your answers. Okay? This is the only time that you really have to check your answers um, for these type of problems because, because you're squaring, you're kind of altering um, the problem a little bit, so you've got to check with the original to make sure that those actually work. So let's try them out. So if I plug in pi over 2, okay, so then cosine of pi over 2 plus 1 equals sine of pi over 2. And remember to plug it back into the original, not the one that you squared, okay? So back to cosine theta plus 1 equals sine theta. So then let's use our unit circle knowledge. So cosine of theta, oh sorry, cosine of pi over 2 is going to be 0. And sine of pi over 2 is 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So 1 does equal 1. So pi over 2 is an answer. Okay? Let's try the next one. So if I plug in 3 pi over 2, Cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus 1 equals sine of 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 does not equal negative 1, so 3 pi over 2 is not an answer. So notice how that didn't work out for us for all the answers. Okay, let's try the last one, plug in pi, so cosine of pi plus 1 equals sine of pi. So cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0, so negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so both sides do equal each other, so the only answers you have are going to be pi over 2. Now, since we're still talking about all real answers, it's still for every 2 pi k, because if I added 2 pi to that, it would give me 5 halves pi over 2. And that would still plug in and give me the same ratios that I had before, because it's still 0. And for sine, it's still 1. So then that, that equation never ceases to not work. Okay? So that's one solution. And then the other one's pi plus 2 pi k as well. Okay? Now don't do pi k because 0 is not a solution for this one. Okay? So those are your only answers. Okay? Have fun.